Thank you to everyone who put in a submission regarding Part 7 of the Environmental Bylaw. So far, the Council has received more than 150 submissions at the closing date on the 20th of July. Clearly, this is an issue that the people of Kingborough feel very strongly about, and it's now Council's responsibility to take that passion seriously and to react accordingly. Basically, here's where we're up to. The situation is that Council has received legal advice that prohibits or it says that the Part 7, Clause 25 of the tree protections in that environmental bylaw is inconsistent with, in conflict with, the planning scheme. Meanwhile, the community has reached out to the Environmental Defender's Office and they have received separate legal advice which contradicts the Council's legal advice. So here's a copy of the Environmental Defender's Office legal advice that says that Part 7 of the bylaw is actually consistent with the planning scheme. And here's a copy of the council's legal advice, which I can't show you. So that's why it says confidential on it, is because it's been deemed, for some reason, not to be available to the public, which is quite interesting in itself, considering that it's Kingborough ratepayers who were the ones who provided the funding for that legal advice. So the council received legal advice that says tree provisions are in conflict and inconsistent with the planning scheme. In conflict, and inconsistent with the planning scheme. Meanwhile, when the community went out and got legal advice from the Environmental Defender's Office, it said quite the opposite, that the tree provisions were consistent with the planning scheme and that they could be read together and in conjunction with. So they say, whilst having a set of regulations for vegetation, clearing may create some complexity that does not necessarily equate to them being in conflict as they can be read together in addressing a tree removal matter. So they say, the High Court has actually found that provisions can exist in separate laws and these can operate, quote, independently and cumulatively, such that a decision may need to be made on the same subject matter under different laws. There's precedent for this in ISPT nominees PTY LTD v Chief Commissioner of State Revenue, 2003, from paragraph 101 onwards. Apparently, the High Court's approach to determining that laws cannot coexist is where they are, here's a quote, clearly and indisputably contradictory, displaying such repugnancy that they could not be reconciled, end quote, or that they are so in conflict that, quote, effect cannot be given to both of them at the same time. So my question is, how do we know that the tree protections in the original bylaw are in conflict with and inconsistent with the planning scheme? Isn't it possible, as the EDO suggests, that they could in fact be read in conjunction with each other? They could be read together, they could be supplementary to each other, they could be complementary to each other. They cover different things. So we need to keep asking ourselves the question with respect to trees on private property and with respect to those bits in the bylaw, part 7, clause 25, are they clearly and indisputably contradictory, displaying such repugnancy that they can't be reconciled? Or can the planning scheme and the bylaw coexist? Perhaps they can simply be read together. So I'm not a lawyer and maybe you are, in which case please leave your comments below. But let's do a thought experiment here. You tell me if the trees on private property section, clause 25 of the environmental bylaw, is in conflict and inconsistent with the Kimber interim planning scheme. According to council lawyers, the slam dunk, the gotcha moment, the irrefutable, unequivocal, the black letter of the law evidence that proves beyond doubt that they are inconsistent can be found within the Minister for Planning's Interim Planning Directive No. 4, which came into effect on the 22nd of February. Specifically, the bit under heading table 5.4, vegetation exemptions. So here we look at it now, 5.4.3. First, I'll read Clause 25, and this is the bit that's supposed to be inconsistent. This is the bit from our bylaw that is being deemed inconsistent and in conflict with the planning scheme. Here goes. 8.25 brackets 2, quote, A person must not cut down, lop, remove, ring bark, injure, or willfully destroy any tree which has a tree circumference of greater than 80 centimetres at 1.5 metres high, or is listed on a significant tree register. So that's the original bylaw. So would you like to hear the bit within the planning scheme that is apparently the slam dunk, the gotcha moment, the bit that is so inconsistent? Here goes. 5.4.3, landscaping and vegetation management. Requirements. 
landscaping and vegetation management within a private garden, public garden or park, or within state reserved land or a council reserve, if a the vegetation is not protected by legislation, a permit condition, an agreement made under section 71 of the Act or a covenant, or b the vegetation is not specifically listed and described as part of a historic heritage place or significant tree register in the relevant interim planning scheme, unless the management is incidental to the general maintenance. Well, could those two things be read together? Could they be read individually and cumulatively? Or are they so clearly and indisputably contradictory displaying such repugnancy that they could not be reconciled, or that they are so in conflict that effect cannot be given to both at the same time. I'm not a lawyer. Maybe you are. Or maybe you're just a concerned citizen who has an opinion about trees on private property. Please share this video among your networks and leave your comments below. My name's Gideon Cordova. Thanks for listening.